Chris Williams. It was Chris. Chris Hassel. Two guys named Chris. Presented by Fairway Meat and Grocery. From the Channel Seed Studios, this is Iowa Everywhere. Channel Seed. Seedsmanship at work. I would like to begin today's show by having you, Hassel. Could you thank your boss, whoever your boss is? CBS is like the only place on the internet where you can just go to the website and print off a bracket. That is exactly what I just did, honestly. When we were getting ready to start the show, I just I Googled NCAA bracket. Yeah. First thing that pops up, CBS... It's Click to enlarge, place. printable bracket. We do it right. Because all these other places, it's like they they want you to click on this and oh, we need you to we need to get paid with this ad and then we need No, it's CBS, it's just super easy. You just click on it and then boom, I got my brackets. I got my men's, I got my women's. I did not get my men's NIT bracket printed yet. We're gonna have to <laughs> fill out one of those. Uh, for the yeah, most I I can't believe I spent 25 minutes watching the NIT selection show last night. How, what, our, what is the NIT selection show even like? I don't think I've oh, seen it. Oh, it was amazing. Our good friend Zubin Mahente was, was hosting it. It was glorious. And the, the, <laughs> Iowa was like, I don't know, the, the second to last, um, maybe even the last reveal region. So you had to sit through all of the other stuff. And and then Tom Crean just goes off. Did you see that? No, I, I, I was too busy with the NCAA tournament stuff. So they I had on the it. NIT committee chair. And Zubin, you know, I asked him about all the teams that opted out. Because there were like six or seven teams that opted out. Like Pitt. Oklahoma, I believe, right? Uh, yeah. And the guy wouldn't respond to it. He really, he he was like, oh, I just want to talk about the teams that are here. Well, Tom Crean wanted to talk about the teams that, that weren't there. I want to make a, a, cor- a corrective mistake. Brian Wardle played for me. Malibi Le- Leons is his player. Okay. I had that one wrong. Sorry, he's, coach. He's way too good for me to screw <laughs> that name up. Sorry. Very versatile player. Uh, there's no question about it. I would want to coach. I would want to develop my team. Uh, you've got bigger staffs than you've ever had. There's plenty of time for the portal. There's plenty of time to talk to recruits. There's plenty of time to negotiate NIL deals. There's not plenty of time to play. There's not plenty of time to get your players on the floor and give them a chance to get better. There's not plenty of time for guys to continue to play that may never get to play again. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, is absolutely ridiculous. It's each coach's choice. I get it. But if you take away a chance to play the games, to put your team on the floor, mm-hmm. let them opt out. All right, the bowl season has it all the time. Let it happen. Who cares? Give your players and coaches a chance to keep coaching and playing, wow. and don't shortchange. If a guy doesn't want to play, go sit down. If a coach doesn't want to coach, go recruit. But there's got to be enough people to put five, six, seven people on the floor and go play. It makes absolutely zero sense to me. Hmm. I, look, passionate. I it's think most games, people... Man. I think most people agree with it, and most in the comments are agreeing with it. Um, also, don't have a problem with the teams that that don't play. Like I really don't. And, what, how, wait, how did this happen? Why we yeah, started with the know. NIT? I was just making fun of you, and then here we are. I guess, but, but it look, is interesting. We're a big picture show. I I feel like, and this just feels just like these like minor bowl games. You are you in a dungeon today? No, my light broke. So there's, I what I did was I made it very much so you could see me, and that's. I it. mean, I could see you. I'm getting accused of having a filter on my camera today. What? You look, uh, you look filtered. I you do. Look, you look a little soft, but that's pretty typical. <laughs> that is typical. I, I mean, I'm using my million dollar camera. It's uh, people say I have an orange face. Now I yeah, did, whatever. I did sit outside get... at the pool a couple times this weekend. Oh wow, wow! There you go. So you I, and, uh, Donald Trump down there, Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, I'm turning out. orange. I, next, next thing I just need the blonde hair. 
We are uh, two guys here on Iowa Everywhere, presented by Fairway Meat and Grocery and the Channel Seed Studios. Real quick, since we started on that NIT, this just has bowl games written over it, all over it, where, like, if you're a fan of Indiana or St. John's or whatever, like, these fans don't care about the NIT anyways. They probably, in many cases, would rather their coaching staffs. The portal opens today. Like, it's open. That's, and, that's bullshit, by the way. <laughs> what is that? It, it, it may be, but it opens today. And I would also say that these – a little bit of like what Tom Crean's – like it makes sense for Iowa to play in it because they've got a young team where most of these guys are going to be back and like go out there and get reps. But I'm just saying like Rick Pitino and St. John's, like they don't give a shit. Like they are literally going to go out and buy every player that they possibly – like that's – the they're not – they're not developing these guys anymore. This isn't 1990. True. You know, it's it's just different. The whole the whole world is. And I can look look. What different. do you want in the NIT? You want teams that want to be there. If if teams don't want to be there, don't go. I would agree. Anyways, uh, the the most villainous coaching matchup of all time is Fran McCaffrey versus Jerome Tang for Iowa State fans. So we'll all be tuned into that on Tuesday. The Iowa State men win the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, cut down the nets in probably the most dominant three-day stretch, three day stretch of Iowa State athletics of all time. When you just factor in, they killed every team that they played, including Houston, who looked untouchable going into the Big 12 tournament. They were beating everybody by 20, 25 points prior to that. And um, I guess all of our questions about the Cyclones and that offense were were solved for now. Hassle, that was a statement weekend, but unfortunately it didn't do a lot when it came to their NCAA tournament projections and seedings and all that. Yeah, here's what it did. I, I, think, I think they would have been a three seed had they not used him. I agree. Like it, yeah. I, at first I thought... Like when everything came out, when all the seeds came out and Iowa state was a two and clearly not the, the highest two, I thought, well, this didn't matter at all. Tournament didn't matter at all to the committee, the big 12 Iowa state's run. But when it came out that they were the last number two seed, I, I think they had to win that tournament to get on the two line. Now you could argue, would it have been better to be a three, the high three, maybe in a different region? I don't know. But, I mean, it's clear the committee just does not value runs like this. Like, what, Iowa State dominated that tournament. Just killed everybody, including Baylor and the team that might have been the number one overall seed had Iowa State not won that. Houston. And it just, it really didn't matter because the committee is looking at Look, it burned Iowa State a little bit. The non-conference schedule, that did come back to burn them a little bit. Yep. But th they were only one spot ahead of Baylor on the list. Iowa State was ranked eighth, Baylor ninth. Yeah. Which is incredible. So are more teams going to start approaching this conference tournament week like Kansas did? It's hard. Uh, it's a hard conversation because you play all these games, right? The, the college basketball season's so damn long. Go back to November. Um, and the way it's set right now, I mean, it, and maybe this is right. I don't know, but it it truly is that the these games in November mean as much as the games in March mm -hmm. when you're on a neutral floor against teams in your conference, you know, in a, in a tournament type setting that, um, should, should these, should these mean more or should these just be treated like just any other data point is the question. And I don't know, like, I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I feel like how you're playing in March should mean. Yeah. More. Look, how many years ago was it that they did away with your last 10 games and that, that used to matter. Your last 10 games used to matter. The way you're playing entering the tournament used to matter. Yeah. Now it does not. I mean, and it hasn't for a while, but they don't look at that at all. They look at the entire season as a whole. But when you look at it, I still don't understand how you make Iowa State last number two. I can, I, I, I can see 
putting North Carolina over Iowa State as the last. Yeah, absolutely. One. I, I actually thought I they w- should be. Honestly, I, 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 I probably wouldn't have done it. I probably would have had Iowa State as the last number one. But when you put those maze side by side, it is extremely close. It's not close when you put Iowa State alongside the other twos, and to have them last, it's almost like the committee's trying to send a message, like no more of this. 300 plus strength of schedule in the non-con yeah that's kind of how i took it as well that that east region is is brutal uh it's been talked about a lot before we came on the air here today the other thing too that really stands out when you look at iowa state's draw and just a lot of these chris all over the bracket are these these storylines that the Mm -hmm. committee claims that they don't care about Iowa State Drake potentially in the second round um well TJ's facing his former team his former team and potentially Drake Iowa State guy and Eric Henderson in the 15th (laughs) seed you know Greg McDermott's coaching tree three of the four teams there are Greg McDermott guys with Darren DeVries Eric Henderson and, and TJ Otzelberger and then I don't think he's playing I think he's been hurt but did you know that joe yesifu plays for washington state now does he really yeah he does i thought he was done i i thought he went to kansas never played and then he got hurt matt will you google that and just yeah he plays for washington state i think really like does he actually play is he a one of the reasons why they had a great year no he got hurt so i don't think he's going to be playing in the ncaa tournament but it's just Yeah, his last game was November 27th, so he hasn't yeah, played so for he, a few months. Maybe he's going to redshirt and be like a 28-year-old Oh, my player. God. But it's just these things are sprinkled all over the Jesus, term. he's only played in five, six games this season. Average six points a game. Man. I mean, he got his ring. Got that ring, baby. What do you think of Iowa State's draw from a basketball standpoint? as far as getting to the Sweet Six. I mean, it's going to be brutal that you're looking at Illinois or you know a team like that in the Sweet 16 if you can get there. Uh, I'm more interested in just getting out of the first weekend. What, what do you think of like that, potentially the Iowa State-Drake matchup? Even? Yeah, I mean, I, when you look at the entire bracket for Iowa State, I don't think it could have been any worse. I'm with you. Okay, other I'm glad that I'm not fact, alone. <laughs> other than the fact that they're playing in Omaha, like, but we even knew that, that was potential gonna six seed, it's like Iowa State's kryptonite and BYU. It's brutal. Yeah, the whole and, thing. and I don't BYU, want BYU. Have you seen BYU was going to be a f- four seed? I believe they got not. They were going to be either the, either the last four or the first five, and they couldn't put them in that spot. Because all of those uh, scenarios would have them playing on Sunday. So they had to drop BYU to a six seed to keep them away from potentially playing on Sunday. So BYU is a much higher rated team than their seed. Then, obviously, you have an Illinois team that could come out of that little pod, too, that is on a roll. Mm -hmm. Just won the Big Ten tournament. I mean, they have been hot for several weeks. Their only loss in those several weeks was, I think, at home to Purdue in a game they just blew. And look, you have to play Drake in the second round, a team that clearly you've been trying to avoid for years. I mean, I love the sexiness of it. As a fan, I kind of like it. But I just don't think it could have been much harder for Iowa State, and I guess it makes sense as the last number two seed. Yeah. Uh, the the Drake-Washington State matchup is probably something we need to dig into a little bit more. Yeah, I know. It's, it's gonna... like I, I haven't even thought about that matchup. I'm just like yeah, assuming Drake is going to win that game. I think Washington State's a slight favorite from what I saw. They were maybe a yep. point-and-a-half favorite. Yep. yep, exactly. I was doing some stuff on – I was reading about Washington State trying to get – I haven't seen them play all year. I was trying to get a little more familiar with them, and they're like one of the like shocking teams in all of college basketball. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that they're even in the NCAA tournament. Tucker DeVries will be the best player on the floor in that game. In fact, I mean, Tucker DeVries 
as far as like a prospect goes, is probably better than anybody Iowa State has. I would even say as far as like the the NBA goes. I don't know. I'm not I'm not great with that. Um, that the dynamic of that though on that Sunday would be fascinating to watch it play out here in the state. The one thing that does um, that I think is interesting is. I wonder if Otzelberger can use this in, in any way, shape, or form. He shouldn't have to. I mean, you won the Big 12. You, you're you clearly going to be a favorite. But, like, I was looking, man, do you, Iowa State would only be, like, a five- or a six-point favorite over Drake. So, like, Drake's analytics and their numbers, they're right. Th- they're basically like you're playing Kansas State on a neutral floor is, is how it would mm-hmm. map out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the only thing I wonder, because everything's going to be talked about the Drake motivation. And rightfully so, because of all the history there. Uh, and, and Tucker, or excuse me, Coach DeVries, Darren can use that, no doubt. The whole Drake fan base will will have that. But I also wonder if, if Otz can use that in his capacity and be like, look, everybody's rooting against you now, all the Iowa fans. And, you know, like, there is a reality to that. Like, the 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 local talking point here is going to be very obvious where – Oh, well, they've been ducking you, and, and now you can kick their ass in the tournament and all this stuff where they could be like, well, we just fucking won the Big 12. We're going to, mm-hmm. you know. And I wonder, too, if TJ could use that in this round of 64 game as well. His really good friend, Eric Henderson's the head coach there. Clearly, TJ um, is a big reason that Hendo has that job. Uh, one of the big, re- well, probably the main reason that Hendo has that job, the familiarity between those two programs is 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 very high. Brian Peterson, a former Iowa State player, is on that staff. Um, you've got support people throughout that entire program that are Iowa State people going back to the McDermott era. So the familiar, and they have. So what's what's crazy about all of this is there's. If you were to ask me, of all the teams in the field of 64 that are not Big 12 teams, who have you seen play the most? I would tell you South Dakota State because Hendo's a good friend of mine, and I've watched a, probably 15 of their games this year, and they, they're they good. Like th- This is a team that can score the biggest difference between this South Dakota State teams and the ones that – um, you know, that you normally think about that 2022 team, if you remember, was kind of a trendy upset pick. Everybody thought they may make a run. And those teams were just like top 15 offense, run up and down the floor, shoot the hell out of it. This team will actually defend a little bit. And they've got one of the best mid-major guards in all of college basketball. So, you know, on the right day, that's a that's a game 15 seed. I, I do think Iowa State will overwhelm them defensively because that's what Iowa State does to most teams. If they're locked in, there's no reason they shouldn't advance to take on Drake or Washington State. But, yeah, it's uh, I'm with you. Like, just the draw because the familiarity factor, and I guarantee Henderson's watched Iowa State a ton, so he's not he's got their scout down. Guarantee DeVries has watched Iowa State, right, because of the, the localness. Like, the, one of the things about Iowa State's defense that gives you an advantage when you get to the tournament, Chris, is because it's hard to prepare for when these teams have never seen it the way that they do it, well, you have two opponents potentially that are very familiar with what you do. As far as there's nothing tricky about it to Darren DeVries or Eric Henderson. So from that standpoint, as an Iowa state guy, it makes me terrified. And the one thing that I don't even think we've, we've hit on from this draw and it's, it's the thing that's the, the furthest out there, but I think is the shittiest thing about this entire draw for Iowa State is if you do make it Mm -hmm. to the Elite Eight, you are going to have to likely play a UConn team at home. Yeah. In Boston. That's going to be hell. I mean, it's going to be like playing Iowa State in Kansas City. That's what that's going to be like. That's what yeah. you wanted to avoid. That was the one one seed you really wanted to I, avoid. I really thought – I didn't think that they would get to the one line. I didn't – I never thought that was too realistic. The one hope I had was that Iowa State would be the two in Purdue's region in the Midwest yeah. and that they could – because I, I love that matchup. Like, bring that on. 
every day. And yeah, this is brutal. The, it, it's got a little bit of a feel, not quite, a little bit of a playing Michigan State in the Palace of Auburn Hills type feel to it. Mm-hmm. I think that year, I think I, I, there's better history people out there to me. But yeah, it, it it's tough. Uh, there's no doubt about that. What about if you're UConn though, and you're you're staring at Auburn, you know? Yeah. In the Sweet Sixteen, like that, that's brutal. Well, yes, That's and if, I, if I'm them. UConn, I'm pissed too uh, because you have that and potentially playing the team that I would say is the strongest two seed in Iowa State in the Elite Eight. Ben Winks, can you pull up the um, odds to win the NCAA tournament? I I know that those they they changed obviously when the bracket came out because of different paths, but I want to say Auburn is you know one of the top. Uh, 10 favorites to win the whole thing. And they are sitting there as a four seed in the region. Ben Wiggs got it pulled up now. So UConn's obviously the favorite at about four to one. Then it's Houston at six to one. Purdue is around seven to one. And here comes Auburn at number seven on the list. Auburn is about 19 to one to win it. Seventh best odds seventh shortest odds to win the national championship right behind them Kentucky right behind them Iowa State so in that one region there's three of the top what nine teams to yeah. win it all I mean they're they're telling us that they believe if you get out of that east that, that you got a good shot is is what mm-hmm. they're telling us with that Buckle up, baby. I will say this. Whatever Iowa State has, it. I mean, they probably have a better odd to get to the Elite Eight and play UConn than they would have to win the Big 12 tournament in the way that they did. Like, who would have had them beating Baylor and Houston by double digits and oh dominating? God. You know, like, none of us saw that coming. No. But it, you know what? It, it didn't really matter that much, and that's what's, no. what's going to be really tough moving forward for – players I, coaches fans we got to find a way and, and like in and, and Iowa State again they did play a terrible non-conference schedule so like that that's all real it's just like so I was down in Orlando right over Thanksgiving when they really struggled down there and they're trying mm-hmm. to learn to play together and like what's crazy to me when I think about it this way is that that game against Virginia Tech you know where you're a shell of what you are right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like they, they're not even the same roster. Hardly that that game matters as much as the game against Houston on March, you know, 12th or whatever Mm -hmm. day it was like that. That's just weird how our sport works like that. But I'm not, not saying those games in November shouldn't, I don't know what the right answer is. They're clearly saying, you need to schedule it better, but then they design this net thing that kind of enhances, you know, it's it's kind of mixed messaging Have going on. Have you seen on. the disparities in net rankings for the teams on the 11 line? No, I haven't. Is it bad? Oh, my God. Well, there, there's one team on the 11 line that's like a net 25, and then another team that's like a net 85. Duquesne as an 11 seed is total BS. Like Duquesne should be no better than a thirteen. No better than a thirteen. What's your problem with the Duquesne? You don't won, like Duquesne? They're, 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 they don't. They're not very good. The A ten wasn't very good. And the the net Caleb is an idiot. Points out in the comments. I, stop caring about the net. Like the net's not that. Especially your own net ranking. Yeah, it just doesn't really matter. And and we've said that I, I I've said that on this show that you know if you're a bubble team that doesn't matter clearly it doesn't Indiana State was in the twenty and they didn't get a bid. Your own net ranking really does not matter at all, and hopefully coaches now will move forward and say okay well let's not care that much about let's not care as much about these quad victories and moving up in the net and even Ken Palm, like. The Big East, I believe, was the number two ranked conference in Ken Palm. They got three teams in the tournament. That's insane. All three of their bubble teams got left out. I think 
for me, Ken Palm's more of an addiction than it is like that actually matters. Does that make sense? Although it yeah. it does ma- like here's what's interesting to me about that though. So like Vegas, the way they set lines, like to me is it's not the most important thing because they're trying to get even money. We all understand how that works. But I, I care about that. Like what is what do Vegas power ratings say considerably more than I do the polls? Cause I don't think Oh like, yeah. You know, I, I I think Chad Leistico's our Iowa voter now. Like I'm I, I, I always like I remember when I was like a kid, I thought how cool would it be to vote in these polls? Like you couldn't pay me to do it now. <laughs> Like Jesus Christ! Like, are you gonna like? I haven't seen Washington State. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's really hard. so. Like to me, like I'd rather trust the data, and generally, the data is what lines up with Vegas, which is the most accurate when it comes to me. But yeah, it's all it's all really good points. Again, like just I don't know how to fix it. It's like you want these games in November to matter, uh, but. I mean, it, you you are right though. It's like, can you blame Bill Self for basically tanking the Big Twelve tournament? Bill Self came out last week and said, "We're not going to try, but we're still Kansas, and we're going to have all of our guys ready for the NCAA tournament." And they didn't get penalized for it. Yeah, I mean, it might have cost them seed line. I mean, maybe if they go all I in the think, tournament, they they get yeah. they they stay on the three, maybe they drop to a four. But what what is that? Does that really matter? Who knows? Especially when you're a team that basically only plays six or seven guys. Like that was the problem for Houston on Sunday or on on Saturday. I kind of thought it would be a thing. Like they they're banged up. They've got a bunch of injuries. Which team is more prepared to play a third game in a row? And it was clearly it was Iowa State. And Bill Self looked at it like I I only have six guys. I don't want to play four days in a row. I don't think they could have anyways. I don't think Kansas is good enough to make that kind of a run. But it it's it's real fascinating. One thing, a couple of our great sponsors, Fairway Meat and Grocery. Go out and uh, fire up the grill. Let's fire up the grill on on Thursday. Ooh, brats, you're gonna you're at a party. You're gonna be partying during the NCAA tournament. You're why don't you run by a Fairway and just bring a ton of meat over to Zavolinsky's house? Do they have Everybody. Fairway in Omaha? I don't know. They do in Council Bluffs, though. Council Tucky. Just drive on over to Council Bluffs. Uh, that's not happening. I don't have a Zabolinski car. Zabolinski claims. So I bump into him in Kansas. He claims he's sending a limo to my hotel to pick me up on Friday night to bring me over to all you assholes. God, assholes internet is just completely... Uh, we have three fairways in Omaha. Look there we go. Multiple selections to choose from. There we go. Well done. You hear that hassle? We, three fairways. We have three fairways in Omaha to choose from. I think the the airport is like 45 minutes from Zabolinski's house. Okay. Well, I'm staying right by the airport, so the only way I'm going out there is if he sends a limo. There's no way I'm driving all the way out to his house. Have I told you... What a an Iowa State fan has claimed to me over the weekend. This this guy was in Kansas City, okay, and made made two of the most outrageous claims I've I've ever heard from a human being. The first claim was that Baylor plus one and a half against Iowa State was the lock of the century. Because this person had inside intel that TJ was scared of playing Houston a third time. Didn't want his guys to have to go up against Houston. So they were just going to lay down. Lock of the century? Yeah. So they were just going to lay down for Baylor. Let Baylor walk all over them so they could just get out of Dodge and not have to face Houston. Okay? Have we even had point spreads for a century? Like if they... (laughs) Is that even been a thing for a hundred years? So. Okay. Maybe he's just talking about the century that started. The next one hundred years. Oh, okay. This same person made the claim that in Kansas City, on in one day, had twelve 
32 ounce Coors Lights. That's expensive. And in- four old fashions in one day. Jesus. So 12 32 ounce Coors Lights, that's like drinking 32 beers. Okay? That sounds so horrible. 32 beers and four old fashions in one no day. Way. No way. What was the more outrageous claim? That Baylor was the lock of the millennium, the century? The or- beer thing is. I mean, because, I mean, theoretically with these point spreads, it's 50-50 no matter what, right? Van Wink says that the 32-ounce beers were 20 bucks a piece down there. Jesus. Then what's an old-fashioned cost down in that area? Well, well, okay, we're getting caught up on the cost. Let, let's talk about <laughs> the, the 32 beers in a day, and then after that, four no old way. fashions? Whew. It's completely out of control. And I'm not going to name who this is. This is an un, unnamed person. Unnamed but, source. But an Iowa State fan that was in Kansas City at these games. Was it Bloom? There's... There's no way Bloom's body could even, like, take that much liquid. He'd f- start filling up his f- feet and his legs. There'd be, be liquid everywhere. God, could you imagine, like, how, like, puffy you'd be the next day if you drank that much alcohol? So I have a, I have a cousin who, <laughs> about, I don't know, 10 years ago, went to an all-inclusive in Mexico and drank so much and didn't drink any water, he gained like 25 pounds in one week in just liquid. Because it just stays there. Yeah, and and he was so dehydrated from not drinking any water. All he did was drink beer, no water. And those like carbs just like sit there. Hey, Could you I didn't do my drinking uh, all that beer and then being like, I'm gonna have some old fashions now. Yeah, like, you don't give sounds... me an old fashy. Um, and it's God. It wouldn't surprise me though if people were like, I. So I left. I left the stadium, and I was walking back to my hotel, and I had a couple of friends out at the Power and Light, and I was like, Yeah, I'll stop by and have one drink with you guys, and it was during that Shack concert. Shaq was DJing. Did you know that? DJ Diesel. No, I didn't. I mean, when Iowa State wins, so it's the night before St. Patrick's Day, so you've got this weird... It was so funny. You've got Shaq up on the stage, DJing. And then you've got thousands of just drunk, crazy Iowa State fans who are just dancing and just amped up, and they're just... Juicy wiggling, be bopping around Kansas City. And then you have all of these just random people in green celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And they had no idea what the Big 12 tournament actually is. Like, they're just there, like, on a bachelorette party or or whatever. It's the weirdest, like, combination of humans. And... It was so funny, too, because it's just like you couldn't even walk through this just massive humanity. And it's just, yeah, there you the DJ Diesel right there. Van Winkle's got the video. It was wild. It what was it that. like? I tried um, to walk through that, and I said, forget this. I am absolutely done. Could you imagine me? I haven't had a drink all day. And, well, you know, I'm a bit of a ask you. curmudgeon what, what, now. What was it like? Because you're working late at these games. Yeah. You're totally sober, and then you exit the arena. Oh, you just walk right into And see these people that have been drinking for 12 hours. Well, and, yeah, it's 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 fun, I will say this. How about the, the, that again, place. somebody we won't name, but the, 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 the guy, the friend of ours that you saw for the first time in years, <laughs> and, like, he couldn't even speak he was yeah. so drunk he had pizza sauce all over this his was, face this was thursday night this this friend of ours again i he he couldn't even put a sentence together and i had gotten some pizza delivered for my kids 
and we got too much of it. And this this gaggle of drunks show up at our hotel, and he took he took some pizza because I offered it because I'm like these guys need they need water and they need some food now because otherwise they're going to be passed out all over the Marriott floor and it's going to be a bad Marriott. Look. And this guy took two pieces of pizza, and these are like not thin crust, okay? It's like a more of a hand toss type crust, not pan, but you know, in the middle. And he smashes them together, <laughs> and he starts eating them like a sandwich, but his mouth isn't big enough for to like put it all in there. And by the time he's done, he's just got <laughs> sauce all over his face, and he's just like smiling. Again, he can't really talk. He's just like, eh. <laughs> and Great it's the game. first time you've seen him in like years, too. It was a wild, wild time. And again, like I'm completely stone cold sober. Here's a little tip for you, and then we're going to get to the Iowa women. Never experienced this in my media life. I've heard stories in the past. The Big 12 tournament now gives beer to the sports writers after games. Really? They had a bar after the championship game. They brought in like a little bar into the press room. God damn it, Hassel, and your freaking internet. I swear to God. Hey, should we just do our triple B? Yeah, we should. Bigger, better, bolder. Powered by Kelderman Manufacturing. Kelderman.com. Triple B. I, I might as well. Wait, are you going with the, somebody from the Iowa State game too? No, I'm going with a Big Ten coach. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll start then since uh, I've got an Iowa State player that I'm looking at here. Milan Monchilovic is great, my triple B. Because this guy was as cold as anybody could be entering the Big 12 tournament. And even after that first game against Kansas State, I mean, the, the guy was horrible. He was four for his last 30 from three-point range entering the semifinal against Baylor. Four for his last 30. What does he do? He goes seven for 14 the rest of the way against Baylor and against Houston. Against a three seed and against a one seed in the NCAA tournament. The guy totally turns it around. And becomes the player that he needs to be. The shooter that he needs to they, be in March. If Iowa State's going to make the... Yeah. He's the only guy on the floor that'll spread out a defense. Mm -hmm. And did you see the interview I did with him after Thursday night's game by any chance and what he said. And Thursday me. night was the, the Kansas, Kansas State, State game, game where he went 0 for 5 again from deep. Is that so when he, you asked him, you were like, hey, you uh, you ever going to make a three again? You ever going to fucking make another shot? <laughs> and he, I didn't even ask him that. I, I said, because I know how badly these coaches want him to like be the man and just take it and I asked him, you only took two shots in the first half. What did they say to you at halftime? Because he came right out and hit a big shot. He scored six points right away in the second half, and it really pushed them to that win. And he didn't even answer the question. He just looked at me. He goes, I swear I'm going to make another three. I promise. <laughs> and then he came out and hit his first one against Baylor, and he we had a, we had a good laugh about that. But, yeah, he's so good. He – but the problem is these other defenses, these other coaches know how important he is to that offense working. Mm -hmm. So they just, they've scouted the hell out of him and he's like number one on their scouting report. Cause it's like Lipsy and Gilbert are both really good, but they're not like these individual, like crazy talents that can just blow you up. Like mom is. He's the only guy on that team that can stretch out a defense. So that it's, it's been really hard as a freshman to go through that. And you've got, you know, he's 18 and you've got 21 year olds breathing down your ass constantly. So that's a good one. I'm going to go, go to the big 10, uh, with Fred Hoiberg, Nebraska, getting in at large. I just 
feel like this has been a really neat turnaround for obviously the former Iowa State coach. Man, he was left for dead. Like they were, I thought he was going to get fired. I really did. I didn't. I think I was, maybe if he's if he's any other person, he does get fired. Yeah, and they've completely turned things. Now they lost and blow lead to Illinois uh, this weekend. But like, I just shout out to him. And then the the real reason too why I put this on there another one of these committee <laughs> storylines pitting Nebraska against Texas A and M. And if if you guys haven't been paying attention out west to Nebraska athletic director Trev Alberts recently departed, and it's pissed a lot of people off. Trev does not have a great re- reputation behind the scenes when it comes to that stuff. I don't know him. I have no idea. But he is not – he really made his bed in that state when he killed UNO football, Nebraska-Omaha. He was the longtime athletic director there. There's a lot there's – a lot, there's a lot of stuff. I think he killed their hockey program too, which was a big deal. Then he goes to Nebraska, and everybody kind of thought, oh, it's our guy. He's our lifer. Well, he is public enemy number one in that state, and Nebraska gets them in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Which, And then you had Trev putting out like weird tweets and stuff last night. So, But, shout but out he's to Fred, the reason man. that Fred Hoiberg is still there. Yes. He, he gave Fred, Fred Hoiberg more time. Yep. So it's a just a really odd first round but I, i'm happy for fred the big 10 coach of the year and it, it really and i i love the guy i thought he was getting fired i thought he was done i was like man he's probably just gonna go be a scout the rest of his career he had that good run in Ames, and, and that was it for him and he's building a real program there like we've talked about it their fans care like that that it's amazing that arena is full for this mm-hmm. program that has had no success traditionally they really, really care, and, and he's got them. But again, because of the guy he is, people want to support him, and I'm really happy for him. So, Fred Hoiberg for me. Who do you got, Van Winks? This will be a good transition as we move into women's basketball, but the Drake women were up by like 14 or 15 in the second half and let their lead slip away to Missouri State. But thanks to uh, a nice inbound play, Anna Miller, there was like, what, three, almost less than three seconds left. Just an incredible play. Lays it up and in to give uh, Drake the automatic qualifier to the NCAA tournament. So shout out to the Drake women. We got another women's team in the tournament. What stood out to me about that play was th- that's a play that you would never see in the men's game. I feel like, like there's You're never right. in the men's game. I think with 2.7 seconds left or whatever it was, 2.6. 2.6. I don't know that there's ever a pass drawn up. I think you get it to one, you throw it into one guy and he drives in and puts up a shot. In this, I mean, you're throwing short corner mm-hmm. right off the bat, a place where you could get trapped and it's over. And the patience to just calmly keep your cool, get it to the right girl, yeah. and go up and make the shot. I thought that was, um, I thought that was great. Shout out to Sam Lozada too, who was covering the team there. He had this great look from the corner. Oh. So, all right, all right, Drake um, women, let's do it. Iowa State women get into the tournament as a seven seed. Didn't quite get to that six line like we talked about last week. They get Maryland and Stanford. I got to send Connor Ferguson, who writes for us at Cyclone Fanatic. Connor is a. You think that I'm like a dirt track racing redneck? Connor has an actual mullet. He sleeps on a dirt patch. Connor can Connor go stay with my. He bed. can go stay with my mom out there. Well, I'm a little concerned about sending Connor. Will just show up there in like a dirt track racing T-shirt, sending him to the most elitist place in the world, Stanford, <laughs> to cover a game. It's like I don't even know if Connor owns a pair of slacks. I actually think like, Connor would fit in pretty well there. Have really? you been to the Stanford all... campus? Yeah, they're just a bunch of chill dudes. No, I haven't been there. I wouldn't go there if you no. You know that's like twenty minutes from where I grew up. Elitist. You, Matt, are an elitist. That's true. Uh, so you fly into San Francisco and just rent a car? Is you can that fly how it into goes? San Francisco or San Jose. Yeah. It's it's in, in between both. 
So I should have just sent you for Psych One Fanatic. I feel a lot more comfortable. I just I'd go. I feel like Connor is just going to offend everybody. And he's just going to be like spit and chew into his cup there. Like, you know. Like. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> Iowa State gets a f- fun draw. Uh, with Maryland because of the history with Freeze, the head coach there, and then potentially playing Stanford in the second round. I thought the Iowa women got a brutal draw. Am I wrong? Am I? Uh, I mean, this is no. It's kind of like the Iowa State is a three. Yeah, LSU is a three. I, hopefully, I think we're going to see it, Hassel. I think we're going to see the rematch finally. Right? I don't know. I mean, I do. They, does LSU get past? Everybody else, I think they I mean, do. Well, I, I don't know may, enough about maybe UCLA, they can just turn it on. You know, maybe they can turn it on because they've got the talent. But they've played like a three seed this season. UCLA is the two. I I certainly hope we see it. I I all all I've wanted to see all season was an Iowa LSU rematch. Yes, we need this game. I I would love to see that. I mean, I'm surprised that they imagine gave... the ratings for that game. <sighs> God, I was thinking about that. There's a really there. You take out the Iowa State factor on the men's side. I'm as interested in this women's tournament as mm-hmm. I am the men's, maybe more. What can you explain? What the deal is with the regions? Why why are the regions so weird in in the women's game? At Albany two. So what, can't you just call it? So the, the women Albany is the, region. Well, the women have two. Sites yeah. for regional, so they and they're split up into probably different arenas, right? So I don't know teams. about the different arenas, but Matt is right. Instead of having four spots for the regionals, uh, there's only two. And how long is w- why is that? I don't know. I, I, again, I bet that though, doesn't last that much longer because I mean, everything is going toward being the exact same as the men. Well, I was thinking about that. That's a great point. I was thinking about this last night. Like, how long will we keep doing the first round the way that we do it? I think you have to now still, but if women's basketball continues to grow, it's like Mo- you... Mo- you're saying moving the first and second round of the women's game to neutral courts just like the yeah. men. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think it's probably too early to do that, and it. but I think it's something you, you kick around at least, right? Like, because... Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah. Iowa, like, it, it's, just, it's just different, but, like, let's say... You know, how hot of a ticket would Louisville, Middle Tennessee be? The men's game still has that, like, people are just going to buy all session passes and go to every game at these sites. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the women's game has that yet, but, man, it, it feels like that we're moving in that direction. Maybe maybe 10 years out? I don't know. We'll see. Well, you also have to keep in mind that, that the tournament might be changing. Um, we're, we're, so, we're likely adding teams in the men's game I, and – Probably in the women's game as well. I sat in Brett Yormark's press conference on Wednesday. Did I talk to you about this on mm-hmm. Thursday show? Not, no, I don't think so. I'm going to do a long, like, just monologue uh, CW pod a lot on this uh, this week, but I'll, we can touch on it here. We're we're going to ruin all this, Chris. I'm listening to Yormark talk about like it's all greed. It's mm-hmm. all greed. And and I, from his standpoint, I truly understand, because his job, Brett Yormark's job, is not to look out for the greater good of the sport. It's not his job. His job is to make as much money as he can for his member institutions. That's what he gets paid to do. And I'm listening to him at this press conference talk about growing the NCAA tournament, and I'm paraphrasing here, but... His his response was, "I'm all about access, and if we can get more teams in the tournament, then I'm always going to be about it." And it's then just what, like, let's guys, just what put 360 we, teams in the game. What are we doing? doing? What, yeah, what is this? It really irked me. Like the football stuff, it's like football's always been about money, right? It's always been a cash grab. That's what's driven all this garbage that is ruining all this for us. The basketball tournament is sacred, man. Do not fuck with this. What are you doing, guys? What and, and are we doing? It, Kyle brings up a good point. We're already the play-in games are are already too much. 
Like, they try to claim that, oh, the tournament begins on Tuesday in Dayton with the first four. Some of those matchups between the bubble teams have been good. But, like, the 16 versus 16 games, like, I, I hate it. I think it's ridiculous. If we're going to do something like this, if and we've talked about this on the show, if you're going to expand it, then just make a little bubble tournament. Yeah. Keep the 64 as is, the 64 slots and the brackets, and the th- real thing begins in the round of 64. Let a, f- let a few of these bubble teams, like in the NBA, when they've created that, and I, I'm not a big fan of that either, yeah. but it's better than just expanding the whole goddamn bracket to 80 or 90 teams. What would you call it, Williams? The last chance dance? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been saying this for six, seven years now. Because I, it's, it, and it's not going to be like, oh, well, this will give teams like Indiana State a chance. This is about the power conference teams. What this is going to do is it's going to put Ohio State and Indiana in the tournament. And Iowa would be in it this year. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, let's mm-hmm. localize it. Iowa would be in the tournament this year. Yep. Kansas State would be in the tournament this and year. And then in return, again, and this is the problem college sports is facing here. Because Brett Yormark's job, again, is not to look out for the good of the sport. Mm-hmm. It's not. Brett Yormark can talk all he wants about all the. It's not his job. It's not Greg Sankey's job. It's none of these guys' job to look out for the good of the sport. They, It's all greed for these conferences. And they're all looking out for themselves. There's nobody who's looking out for the good of college athletics. And that's the problem. Right. Like it, the, mm-hmm. And like the NFL, has, all these owners are, it's, you can't, it's hard to compare it. Like people always want to be like, well, this is how the NFL does it, or this is how the NBA does it. It's different. Like Duquesne is not the same thing as North Carolina. <laughs> right. Like Alabama football is not the same thing as Iowa State football. Like all this, like there's nobody looking out for the good of all of this. There's, and, and the, listen, the athletes can say whatever they want, the student athletes. You guys are, this is bad for you too. Like I know that you all can go get NIL deals and you have collect. Nobody's looking out for you. You guys need to have some. If we're going in this direction, you need to have a collective bargaining agreement. You need to have a union because this isn't like they're going to keep screwing the 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 whole thing. I I almost had to get up and walk out of your Mark's deal the other night, and I think he's done a really good job for the league. And I don't have anything against Brett. I actually really like him, but like. I'm just sitting there like, do not fuck with the basketball tournament, please. Can you guys leave your hands off of one thing? They're already screwing with this football playoff. They're already moving it to 14 teams now. And we haven't even had a 12-team one. I think we've already started to see some of the effects of realignment in college basketball really bringing things down. Uh, realignment that's been forced by football and greed. Did you see the American Conference Tournament this weekend? No. Did you watch any of that? I didn't, no. Oh, my God. It was so pathetic, the environment. But but I think they were playing in Fort Worth. So, you know, you have all these teams – with the American losing the teams to the you know the Big Twelve, then you you have all these teams jumping up from the Conference USA's into the American, and now the conference is even more spread out. You ha- there was a game, I think it was uh, Charlotte and Temple in the semifinals, and a guy took a picture from up above a wide shot, and this is in the middle of the game. You could count 37 fans in the stands at this 15,000-seat arena. It is sad. That's the problem, too. It's like we're – like these these small conferences, are, it's a lot like the women's game. And I don't – so, like, the top, like, 10 women's teams are really popular, right? Like, it, it's it's – we've got stars. It's growing. The, the problem is, like, for a tournament like that, for, like, the American, okay, we're going to run four games, four days uh, games. Like, for a casual fan, they're gonna get, like, okay, well, great, UAB's here. 
They got a nice team this year, right? South Florida, right? They're a fun team. You and me would go and we'd put 10 mm-hmm. bucks on the game and go have some beers and watch it, but we're geeks, right? Like mm-hmm. we would do that. You're putting them in Fort Worth. Like, geez, do you know how much stuff there is to do in Fort Worth? Like, mm-hmm. if you're a, even, even if you're not a sports fan, like, my God. Um, we've watered it all down other than these big leagues. And even like the Big 12, okay, if I was, I promise you, Chris, if Iowa State wouldn't have been playing in the title game in either of those tournaments, especially the women's, if that would have been Houston versus Baylor in the men's championship game on Saturday, two top 10 teams, that place would have been at best half full, at best. And that's the best conference in America. We saw it in the the Big Ten tournament. I mean, there were a lot of pictures of the upper deck. There was nobody in the upper deck for Big Ten semifinals. This might be – you're a better person to ask than me. You know what the perfect realignment screwing up a basketball program to me is? is Maryland. Oh, God, yeah. They lost all their rivalries in the ACC. I mean, they they belonged in the ACC. Oh, they don't fit there. Like – Again, who's looking out for the betterment of like the whole? Nobody is. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all. Uh, it used to be about oh, how many eyeballs can we get? How many TV eyeballs can we mm-hmm. get? Now that doesn't matter anymore. And I guarantee you, if the Big Ten could, they kick Rutgers to the curb, but they can't. You know, like the whole thing. Just I, I hate it. It's our kids. Matt are going to grow up in a world like by the time there are like, it's going to be unrecognizable. And for many reasons, it's going to be for the better, right? Like these players were taken advantage of forever. I understand why they're all pissed. I, I, I get all this, but this, this has just um, this gross feel to it. Do not screw with this. I, I am. I'm begging you people do not mess Leave with our brackets, our brackets alone. <laughs> You've already you're already going to ruin football. Do not ruin our college basketball tournament. By the way, it if is you sacred. want if you want the best bracket to print out to to follow the tournament, go to Matt Norlander's Twitter. Matt Norlander oh, works okay. at CBS Sports. He always puts out the bracket. Also has the game times and networks on it. Oh, fantastic! Okay, so Matt Norlander's Twitter is where you find the the best bracket year in and year out with all the information you need on it. We got hashtags starting. Leave our brackets alone. It's just uh, don't mess with the tournament. You guys are making money everywhere else. Don't screw with the college basketball tournament. It's all I'm asking. Van Wink's screw- got it up here, right from the yeah. page. Yep. You're Beautiful. screwing with football. You know, you're, you're jacking around all kinds of realignment. You're moving our rivalries. You're doing all this. Don't screw with our college basketball tournament. That's it. That's all we ask. It's not broken. It's like the best thing in sports. Stop. When do you fill out your bracket? I wait uh, until Tuesday Wednesday. or Wednesday to do it. Yeah. Because you know what else? I like to see how those bubble teams look in Dayton. Always because one of them you're makes not a picking run. that game. Yeah. You just get the winner of it. And if you see a team, wow, well, they look really good. Maybe you pick that that 10 or 11 or 12 seed to, to win a couple games. I like to uh, watch, and I like the, to just let it marinate. Just let yeah. it marinate. Let me get. Let, let's let's talk about this. Let's let's get all these. Like, there's going to be all these sexy picks, and then I, I usually stay away from the sexy picks. I like to watch the point spreads too. Like, where's the yes. money coming in from? Who's like, is this a pros versus Joe thing? And I really, you know, if, if I'm going to have 12 32 ounce Coors Lights, I want to I want to be on my ninth. Before I fill out my bracket. Really? Oh, you fill it out drinking? I don't do no, that. I honestly, fill mine out sober. My thing is, it's turned into over the years where I get so enamored with Iowa State's bracket because they're in the tournament every year. Um, sorry, shot at you. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, dude, I was the, the I always got question, a chance to make a run in the NIT. The real question is, how many people are at this Iowa NIT game? That's on Tuesday. It's going to be really interesting because we've seen over the years that some of the best men's atmospheres at Carver have been in the NIT. But this year, it's going to be a little different. There's and a group a, of Iowa State fans. It's a 8 p.m. tip. There's a group of Iowa State fans on Twitter trying to 
organize a rally to just go and boo both teams. That would be funny. <laughs> that would be really funny. I mean, what else you got to do on a Tuesday night? Hey, uh, Brandon asked us a question earlier in the comments. He said they're having a debate at the office this morning. Would you rather win the Big 12 and lose in the second round of the of the big tournament? And I assume he means win the Big 12 tournament, lose in the second round of the NCAA, or lose first game of the Big 12 tournament God. and lose in the Elite Eight. It's impossible to answer. I I would My, much I, rather lose in the first round and then get to the Elite Eight. Yeah, I mean, to me, like that's the no-brainer answer. There is one caveat. Mm-hmm. Unless you've experienced the Kansas City run and doing it's just I get it. You get judged on how you do in the NCAA tournament. That's all correct. If Iowa State would lose to South Dakota State, the season would be a failure, even though it's been a great season. And if they um, lose to Drake, yeah. Absolutely. In the second if round. If you're not in the second weekend now, it's a mm-hmm. People have a bad taste in their mouth, but man, like the the experience that these fans get in cutting down the nets and just it, it's really special. It really is. Like it's, I would venture if you if you would but ask how many like the, how many elite eights has Iowa State been to in in program history? One since the forties. Yeah, one. I in mean, modern day. Yeah, I think maybe you could make the argument. You know, if the, it, Sweet sixteen. If it was, if he's asked Sweet sixteen, that's yeah. not they, they, the elite done eight's that an ton. easy. It's an easy answer. I, I I'm think just you, saying. Yeah, I think you got to go with go one and done and get to the elite eight. Yeah, I'm just saying. There's there is an argument to be made just for like life experiences. Sure. That when they make that run in Kansas City, it's it's really special. It's really really special. And that was the thing. I was so happy for TJ the other night. Did you know? So Iowa State won its sixth Big Twelve tournament. He had never been a coach on any of those staffs before for what? all of his time. Yeah. How is that he possible? Hadn't. Because when Fred made the run, it was when he was out at Washington and then he comes back Prom's first year. Prom won two of those things. And TJ was already gone at South Dakota state. Fred had three um, or wait, Fred had two Prom had two. Now TJ has one and uh, Eustacia had one. He had never coached in one of those games. By the way, we, we've heard from the authority, Hawkeye fan, Circle Herc. He says oh, Carver's okay. going to be packed because they love the NIT. I, there was a, <laughs> let's How see. much are there, tickets? Those, those tickets go on sale at 10 o'clock this morning. $20 for adults, $10 for you. $20? 20 bucks. That sounds like a lot. Sounds like a total ripoff. Yeah, I thought they'd be like 5 bucks. Uh, see, I, this I, is the problem. They need to make them $5. And free beer, and just get people there. But it Who doesn't controls matter. Controls that? Yeah. Does Iowa control that, or does yeah. the NIT control that? I remember when I was in college. So Iowa State. This is after the Stacey stuff. The program was in the, you know, underground for a while. They made an NIT. This was my freshman year of college. I remember lining up at like seven in the morning with my friend Jess to wait to make sure we could get a ticket to the NIT game against Marquette. Hmm. <laughs> Like, we waited in line. Like, it was sold out. It was crazy. And then that one year, Iowa and Iowa State played in the NIT. Do you remember that? Yes. I remember that. That was a, I mean, that was a feisty atmosphere. Feisty. But that yeah. was, be- the NIT was different then. Yeah. Now it's College like a minor sports bowl was game. different then. It's, and it, it also depends on where, where you at, are at in your program. It's the Cure Bowl. Like I, I thought it was great when Iowa made the NIT run in Fran's second or third year. I, I went to Madison Square Garden to the semifinals. It was very encouraging for that program then. Brian has a suggestion on Twitter. He wants to trademark Iowa versus Kansas State. He wants to call it either Fran Tango <laughs> for Fran Tang or It Wits. N I T Wits. Nitwits unleashed. Matt, can you pull up? I tweeted it last night, the one shiny moment for Kansas State that this Kansas fan made. Have you seen this, Chris? Have you seen no. it, Hassel? By the it's way. It's the funniest shit I, that I've ever seen in my life. 
I, I want to point out that I didn't properly um, give credit to Circle Herc. He didn't say we love the NIT. He said we love to K NIT. He we love to knit. <laughs> Capital NIT. So Matt's this tracking Kansas down that fan- video. I didn't see that. I didn't see the vid. Oh, it's great. Uh, it's, it's some of the best smack you'll see. This for our podcast audience. Oh, there's a lot of funny stuff in here that you you won't be able to hear but the a kansas fade made a one shiny moment for jerome tang in kansas state we got a great party outside k-state students gathered on k-state president richard linton's lawn chanting free kwan minutes later a few basketball players including tomlin appeared on the scene in support just hours later athletics director gene taylor announced tomlin's dismissal from the team the ball is and now there's a report out of Kansas that Tang was complaining that someone from Iowa State was using a cell phone to spy on Tang's puddles. Ludicrous. Ludicrous rumors. Well, he saw Connor Stall- Stallions behind the bench, apparently. This isn't a Connor Stallions thing. This is stupid. I mean, I, I know you saw what you saw, but I'm not going to talk about it. And others need to be much more careful with their words it's moving forward. And I, we had more dudes than they did today. My wife might be kind of mad at me. I, I wasn't trying to get a tech. I didn't, I didn't say anything. And then I got a tech was telling Gary that he was the adult because he was chirping with one of my players. Uh, just proud of young rookie fan. No, no, he just didn't want to shake hands. So far, he just did a flyby. It's fine. We got our kick there. We shook everyone's hand. So I guess it's different here today. He might be the second biggest flopper in our league. The, the number one flopper place for Iowa State. He's really good. Same with Mitchell, right? What is that? It's one of their staff members. First staff members. State I'm just telling you, I'm really excited about next week because I believe we're going to be in the NCAA tournament. And I'm excited about, uh, you know, next week and what God has in store for us. <laughs> Amazing. He's got a trip to Carver in store for you. Carver Hawkeye Arena on a Tuesday night at 8 p.m. It's so good. I've, I've, I'm not going to lie, I've watched it like 10 times. That is I've good. The hates women because <laughs> it's so over the top. And then at the end when it's just Jesus standing over the NIT logo. <laughs> oh, my God. I hate this a- bastard. Apparently, God didn't actually need Kansas State in the, NIT- or in the NCAA tournament. I'm- it was not part of God's plan. They weren't even close to getting Fran in. Tango. They weren't even no, close. God, no. They're we not even that on our last Oh, like, come on. He didn't really believe that. He really, he Justin says, that. is this heaven? No, it's Carver Hawkeye Arena. <laughs> All right, fun show, everybody. Reminder to download the DRF Sportsbook app for all your tournament needs. You know what I... What was that? You broke up again. Yeah, I, so, perfect. Because what I'm saying is, you know what I'm doing today? I am going to really look into the Starlink internet. I'm tired of this shit. I'm done with it. <laughs> I'm done with it. Give me the God Starlink. He's Chris Hassel. Maddie Van Winkle. We're presented by Fairway Meat and Grocery in the Channel Seed Studios. We'll be back later this week here on Two Guys Named Chris.